You're listening to the AID Network. Hey friends, welcome back to another Bricky's Guide to Breaking into Hollywood. I am your host, Mark Bricky. This is my guide to breaking into Hollywood. Oh, that's how we came up with the name. Ben Scrivens is a great example of giving yourself permission to do whatever it is that you want to do. We've talked to other people this week about creative merchandise when we had Sean Kirkham of Skybound on. Sean got a job at Skybound, rode that horse as Walking Dead grew, that company exploded, so he kind of went and got a job working from somebody, and it all worked out well. But there's more than one way to skin a cat, and Ben Scrivens proves that by being the president and founder of Fright Rags. Fright Rags is a collection of pop culture-inspired items for people just like Ben, fans of all things horror. That's right, he was able to take his fandom turn it into freedom by making it into a business. He let his love of all things horror guide him to where he wanted to be. He figured out how to get the t-shirts down, how to do the design. He was a one-time graphic designer. And then he went after Hollywood and got into the world of product development and product licensing. So if you are a fan of a certain genre of the entertainment industry, and maybe you live someplace like Rochester, New York, where Ben lives, and you think, How am I going to get into the entertainment industry? I'll tell you how. You break into it. You give yourself permission, just like Ben did. If you want to get your business started, you want to make t-shirts, you want to make stickers, you want to make posters or marketing materials like postcards to let people know that you're there, use our friends over at jackprince.com. That's J-A-K-Prince.com slash circle of trust, where you'll save money with each and every order, free shipping all over the U.S., Ben Scrivens figured out how to get the licensing in his back pocket so that he would have permission to work with all of his favorite titles in Hollywood. Once that was figured out, he had to figure the whole idea of production. How do you make these t-shirts? How do you make these posters? How do you collaborate with other artists? How do you do it? Well, that's part of the episode, but why do you do it? Because you love to. And Ben's love of the world of Horror and collectability and nostalgia has guided him through a very, very fun career. If you go over and look at Fright Rag's website, you'll see all kinds of different movies, all kinds of different products. But the one thing that you'll see that's always in common is Ben's love of this world and of this culture. Sounds easy, right? Just figure out the thing that you love most in this world. Give yourself permission to get involved, to become a part of it. And boom, you have a business You have a career, and it's all based around something that you love. This is a familiar message to me because I wanted to do a podcast full-time. I wanted this to be my job. So I pulled up my sleeves. I figured out how to do it Monday through Friday. I did it for free for a while, and then I figured out a way where people could support me. And that was by going to my website, AIDpodcast.com, becoming a member of the circle of trust because I say cool things like becumbering and signing up to get daily bonus content and access to our archive. Today's episode is just one of over 800 where I've sat down, talked to very creative, very passionate people to figure out how they designed happiness into their personal and professional lives. This conversation with Ben was a really, really fun one. We talked about Halloween because we do a special that'll be coming up soon called Creep Week where we feature all people that just work on things that are creepy, whether it's their art, whether it's horror, whether it's making stuff that makes me sick to my stomach, but they do it because, hey, we all have different interests. We're all entitled to be into what we're into, and we all have the ability to learn how to earn from whatever that love or interest may be. Sign up today at AIDpodcast.com to hear the full episode to unlock our archive of over 800 of these, but sit back right now and enjoy a great conversation with Ben Scrivens of Fright Rags. Go over to their website, look around, and just look at all of the products on there and imagine if you were doing that with what you love. Hey, I'm doing what I love for a living. You can be doing it too. Just jump right in. It's AID 667, the neighbor 
of the Beast. No, I know. I, I, I agree a lot. I mean, partially because with the internet and the connectivity of everything, you know, the race to see, say, a Stranger Things season two and then put your opinion on Twitter or Instagram or, or Facebook is you're almost you're feeling like it's almost that FOMO like I need to get it now right because if I don't now I'm late like it's Monday and I'm late to watch it like right. everyone has seen it now and I think everyone feels that sense of urgency that they need to get it done I mean they're excited but they want to get it done so they can they can talk about it and, and talk with their friends or whatever especially if all the their friends in heaven but yeah I the whole consumption it is a very odd thing especially for me because there are some ways that I'm a major, you know, collector or I sure. lo- obviously I'm in this business. I love what we do. I, I, I live and I breathe it, but there is a part of me that feels very detached from it because I need to be in my own headspace sometimes. Right. I just can't, I, I want to create and not just consume, consume, consume. I mean, I just finished off a really cool room in my house. It's sort of like a mini home theater and I don't get to spend a lot of time in there, but when I do, it's great. It's just, I, but I can't spend all my time in there, you know, and I have some friends that are like, we're doing a 20 hour, you know, Friday 13th marathon. I'm like, who's got the time for that? Fuck the electrician. I want to be those guys. Like, how do you have 20 hours to dedicate to that? Damn, like I have no time to do that. And I'm not complaining. It's just the, the, the reality of the situation. Yeah, It's a different life decision. It is. But I do wonder about that. Like, you're right. Where are the creators? And I, I, but weirdly enough, Stranger Things, as an example, is a brand new show. Right. You know, it is new, even though it's, you could argue that it's retro. So now we're building something new based on the past, but it's still new. They're new characters and Netflix got their act together and finally licensed that shit out because they weren't doing it for a while. And now it's completely blown up. Um, yeah, that was, weird that, was- that was weird that Netflix was like, no, we're, gonna, we're not going to really go down that road. It's like, that's where the they culture's at. You know what? They didn't have the infrastructure for it. Oh, that's what they it was. Did. They had to build it first. I think- yeah, I think from what I understand, they, they were using licensing agents for a little bit for other stuff like Orange is New Black or whatever. Mm-hmm. Stranger Things is the first thing that they had on their own, own that they, shit, we can make a butt ton of money off this. We need to maybe A, keep it for ourselves and B, uh, figure out how to license this out. Um, and I think they've done a pretty good job. I've seen it all over the place. But I agree. I think we are caught in this almost... Um, whirlwind and i don't know what you want to call it like this whirlwind of just people consuming and seeing new stuff and consuming of all the stuff that's been out but maybe we need more people to break out and be creators but then you need a platform for people to do that and a voice for those people and people to support that but then again i mean there's kickstarter there's all these other places where people are trying to get their stuff out that's the weird part about the culture is that it's never been easier to be a creator (laughs) You know, right. because this is an idea that I have and I, I, I circle of trust. Hey, I'll give it out to anybody. If you can make this happen, go for it. You could literally create a show that only exists on Instagram. And now right. that Instagram, you can string together 10 videos. You could literally do 10 minutes, an episode where people swipe through. You could do a choose your own adventure like that. That advent right there, that makes it so much easier to just go where people are at. And imagine if you find a feed or if you do something wild, like you tell a story in reverse. So as you're watching the Instagram feed, you just keep going more and more and more back to the root of where, like there's so many platforms, but yet people are plugging in in a very different way. And that makes me wonder, and this is old guy talk, but fuck it. Like I'm literally giving you life advice. There was something magical about waiting for next Waiting for the next Motley Crue album. What will it sound like? Waiting for anticipation. The, exactly. It 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 created part of the human brain where you had to draw your own conclusion of what could this be like. What is next? But when you constantly rip through Stranger Things as fast as possible on Friday, then you go see the two movies that came out this weekend, and then you go, "Fuck! It's already Friday. It's time to go see the Thor movie." You know, like there's not time for the brain to slow down and to pull that creativity of where could it go from here? What's the next part of this puzzle? Cause you're just, you're consuming, you're consuming, you're consuming, and there's no time to digest. 
Yeah, it's it's it leads to to mental burnout. You know, it's funny. My wife and I watch Face Off on Sci-Fi. Okay. And you know, I've been following that show since the beginning. It's a contest I, show. Yeah, yeah. You know, they they it's the whole like reality show where there there's a whole bunch of people that every week they have to do a makeup. It's like Project One Way for you know for face for makeup. Yeah, horror. It's great, and yeah, there's a lot of cool stuff on it. But like for the last two or three years, like as a season was ending, it'd be like stay tuned in two months. Or in six weeks, we're going to have the other season. And I'm like, no, I need like I need time to like not watch Face Off, to right. want to watch Face Off because it's too much. And I find like I'm the one that told my wife, I'm like, I don't care about the next season. Like, I'm, I'm I need to be done for like six eight months before you know. It used to be like when we were kids, seasons of TV would end in May, and then we they picked back up in September. You had the entire summer to a not watch fucking TV and right. B wonder what the next season of Roseanne was going to be like, or Seinfeld or fill in the blank, or even our cartoons that we loved growing up, you know? Yeah. You cared about cliffhangers because they actually, yes. you were actually void without any content. Right. And you know, I was watching silver bullet last night and there's a funny part in that movie where they're dozing off and the TV switches over to the spark star spangled banner yeah. at like two in the morning, three in the morning. <laughs> and then after the star spangled banner goes to the, the snow static. And yeah. I'm like, I remember that shit when I was, you know, like you jet couldn't watch TV by. after two 30 in the morning. Cause there wasn't any TV. No TV was done. TV took a time out, you know, yes, it, and, TV and took a time out <laughs> until it was, wildly preachers in the morning like who's getting up well, at 5 a.m yeah. to watch jimmy swagger like i'm still or benson i just remember benson on at like four in the morning <laughs> hey r.i.p benson just passed away oh shit really yeah yeah he just just passed away poor old benson oh, it, was, it was a great great character actor uh, yeah. so let me ask you this with all the products and SKUs that you have are we doing print on demand are we creating physical goods and putting them on a shelf where's how's that exist for you um, we actually still create goods and put them on the shelf. We don't do a lot of print on demand and we do have a printer in town. So we are a little bit uh, more connected in terms of turnaround time. So we'll, we might try a small order first and say, okay, you know, let's like, we'll take a, say a release of like three to five shirts, two of these things. We might be like, you know what, this is, we should probably print a lot more of these to have them at the ready. Uh, these we like them. We just aren't sure about how they're going to go. So we'll print less, but we'll sit there when we release, you know, uh, for instance, a good example is we, we had custom black and orange baseball tees made for us, cut and sewn for us. And we were going to, we had about three or four releases planned throughout the Halloween season for these. The first release was this idea of taking vintage Halloween decorations, but making them for today, like Michael Myers is one, Sam from Trick or Treat is one. And they were cool designs. And we thought, okay, we we're going to release these on these, these baseball tees. But we didn't go crazy with our print numbers. We kind of hit kind of like middle to low end of what we would normally do. And literally, they were gone in two hours. I mean, gone. And so we immediately, I mean, we were already looking. We talked to our printer. We put them up for pre-order so we could start bringing the orders in and then place the order with the printer the next day. So, you know, there was only about a half an hour where people couldn't really order them. Um, so we have to monitor those things. But, you know, we do make physical goods, and we want, we want to be able to ship them as soon as we can. Once in a while, you know, every month we do a, a T-shirt where it's 24 hours only. So we do yeah. – we take the orders for 24 hours, and then we cut it off and make the shirts. But people understand it's going to go out in about five days. But everything else, it's – honestly, it's a crapshoot. And it's, we don't always get it right because you don't – again, go back to do they like the property? Do they like the design? Do they like the shirt? Blah, 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 blah. So many factors with that. Do you print in-house or do you have a company that you're partnered up with? We have a company that we're partnered up. Um, they're two and a half miles down the road. Um, oh, that's we have great. a great relationship with that's them. Great. Yeah, it's it's really great. We we used to print out of out of state. Originally, our shirts were printed right in town, but we got to a point where what we wanted to do, just no one around here could do it. So we started using another company out of state, which was fine, and they've been wonderful to us. But then uh, there, we did – come across a company that was um, newer. I mean, it's as a few years ago that uh, was doing the stuff that we want to do and we developed a relationship with them. So we just, we use them for everything, but it's great. Cause now it's like, it used to be where I could go, go to press checks or I could check out things coming out. You know, we could go like tomorrow. I have to go over there cause we're testing something out. So I'm going to be there when they're printing it. And cause you know, 
cell phone pics or emails aren't no. always the best for stuff like that. You know, I mean, you can't tell you take a picture of a shirt and it's going to look wildly different than what you're looking at. Yeah. I mean, overseas uh, manufacturing is so yeah. affordable what those guys can do in the turnaround time. But you know, you're looking at photos and you're like, is, uh, is that the gold that I really want? Is that the, sh-? you know, it's, it all comes down to the, the Pantones because Pantones, when you go over to clothing, there's always a, a, a color loss. Like you can never oh, get it just right. So you're looking through a camera and cameras tend to always add more blue to everything. So it's really confusing with the box sets that you do. Do you guys create those masks or is that you partner up with the company? Uh, we have them done. We have a manufacturer in China that does them. And Fucking like you a. said, yeah, working with a, that's a whole other world of, like you said, you get certain things. I mean, we've, we've had a couple calamities where, I mean, you've got these things in most cases, you already got them on pre-order because, you know, you need to start selling these things and we're waiting, you know, the timing never works out. We no. can, we can plan. I mean, every time we release a mask, we're like, okay, we got to start earlier next time. And we do. And it's still something's so you know we'll get a shipment of masks and there are times where we're like ah, i hope it's gonna be okay we yeah. open the box and we're like oh thank god because again like you said they can send pictures of everything they can send samples samples look great you get the final production and you're like what the hell they literally have a three-year-old painting these things and well, it makes crazy. you realize when you really looked at your gi joe's your star wars figures like man they totally <laughs> missed the belt on this one like, and you understand <laughs> yeah. how my idea is I want to go to China and open up a pop-up factory in February and make all the money because when they shut down in February, everyone in America is like, but how are we going to get affordable goods made for the next 20 days? You know, we, it, it's, you're so right. February, we actually were dealing with that now because we have some mass in here next year and, and we're like, oh crap, are we going to be able to get these done? And, and we've, we, had, we had this issue this year where we knew February was coming. We were all ready. We get, they get back from their February break, whatever. And literally, I don't know what this was, but the one person apparently that could make these masks in their company, I don't know why it's one person is missing. He never came back to work. No one knows where he is. <laughs> and I'm like, so wait a minute. Why is A, is he missing? And B, why is there one person that can do this? But <laughs> like, think it about, doesn't make any sense to me. Ben, think about the script though, where he's a master mask maker and he <laughs> right. gets abducted. <laughs> Because someone evil needs these masks made, and they know that he is the only one, John Wan, the mask maker. And he's just like totally, J-O-N, by the way, and he's just totally like W-O-N. It lines up perfectly for the trailer, okay? Everybody loves And just so you know, the angle in the N and the angles in in the W and the other end, it's all perfect. And the O has a slash to it. So John Wan, master mask maker. And it's like the whole trailer, it's just him ripping off like oh there's john Wan again i didn't know he was there so when you love halloween like you do when you love these properties like you do walk me through the moment the first sample comes and you're like i have just traveled back in emotional time i remember being so excited on that Thursday afternoon for the sun to set and to finally get to put my Halloween mask on and go out in the world as this character. And now I've just made a mask. It's in the box. It's got the punch through. I can see it. Like how great is it to be able to live your life in a full circle of creating something that you once loved more than anything? Oh, it's, it's pretty remarkable. I mean, especially when, you're creating something that didn't exist before. So when, you know, our first mask, well, we had done a Tarman mask, which worked really good, but our first really like kind of overseas mask, maybe mass produced, if you will, mask was the Terminator one. And we did a mm. Terminator face that was the T-800 and light up eyes. And, you know, that had never existed before. There was no T-800 mask in 84 from Ben Cooper. So it's like looking at something, you're like, this is, this is what it would have looked like probably a little bit cooler than what it would have looked like back in the eighties. And I'm holding this thing in my hand and it's real and it feel, it feels store bought, if you will. Like that was always like this weird, in my mind, this weird bar to hit, like it felt retail ready to me. Um, like I could have bought it at Toys R Us or Kitty city or something, you know? And I don't know, man, it's, there is that moment. There's definitely that moment where you get to stop and go, whoa. Like the, when we first signed the Halloween license, I mean, yeah. I've been going after that for years and that's my favorite movie of all time. And even though we didn't do a mask for it, the day I literally signed that license and sent it in, 
there was part relief and then part holy shit like i literally went home had a cigar and some nice scotch for like an <laughs> hour i was able to go fuck yeah and then literally right after that i was like all right what the hell are we gonna do we got to figure this shit out and it was right into go mode like it it's fun to like sit back once in a while and be like holy shit but there's always again going back to that there's always something else it's like that's great but fuck, we should have done that a little bit differently or next oh, yeah. time we're gonna do this you know oh yeah and that that's what makes every workday fun, right? Is that, oh, I, I didn't get it this time. Or, or that's one of the reasons why I love doing repetitive interviews with people. It's just, you know, you keep chipping away more and more at their story, more and more at their personality. And, it, you know, once the audience understands like, oh, when Mark hangs out with this person, they have this kind of vibe. I like that vibe. I buy into that vibe. When they get together, I don't know where it's going to go, but it's going to go someplace that's either inspirational or really, really funny or Oh, when they'd start talking process, like I, I learned so much because they have a way of sharing knowledge that I can, you know, consume it. Like there's just those moments where it's great, but when it's done, you're always ready to move on and to, to do the next thing. So if licensing was easier than what it is and I could just give you any property, what's, what's the big fish that you just, that you just wish that you could land? You know, right now, now to be honest, Warner brothers is the one that we're, we're, talking to you the most because yeah. they have, uh, I mean, clearly they have Friday 13th and Nightmare on Elm Street, but they also have so many others that, you know, we've done in the years past on license and things, but I made it a point, you know, a few years ago to be like, we're not going to do anything else with those unlicensed unless it's something like a parody. And we did a parody Friday 13th one the other day uh, for Friday 13th a couple weeks ago. Um, but that was clearly, I mean, we talked to our lawyer about it. That was clearly a parody take on something that yeah. we weren't trying to pass off as an official product. Right. Right. Um, but instead of taking the easy way out and just doing the whole, you know, slam dunk, we're going to put out a Jason shirt on Friday 13th. It's like, no, like we're not going to do it. And it, again, it's been a hard one because we've done it in the past and it's been on license, but people don't realize that. And I don't want to do that anymore. Um, especially for something like that. So to me, that's sort of the big fish right now because they're not really signing anybody at all. Anybody new, they're mm. kind of doing their own thing and that's fair enough. And I've had yeah. many conversations with them and, and, and they're very nice. They're not jerks about it. Um, but to me, it's like, as soon as that door opens, we got a lot of ideas. We got a lot of things we can do with it. And I, and people want it. And yeah, you could argue that everyone's done Jason, everyone's done Freddie and everyone's done this and that, but People want it. Yeah. People really want it. And we get requests every single day. So why don't you uh, guys do this? Yeah. Why, why don't you do the new it? You, you lost, you missed an opportunity. Oh really? <laughs> because that wasn't an opportunity. Like you don't think we thought about that. Maybe yeah. when that movie was announced, like you don't think we try <laughs> like people don't get it. Like, yes, we oh. want to do it, but we can't. People tell me all the people that should be on my show. And like, oh, God. you realize that I'm a little bit of an asshole and not everybody right. wants to have these kind of conversations, right? Like if I played it straight and all I did was kiss people's asses, we'd probably have a different show, but you start to, you know, get real and, and ask people like things that are not in their bio that changes the, the pool of people that are willing to sit down. And especially, you know, now that I do all the interviews face to face, like that even limits the amount of people that want someone in their workspace or in their yeah. home, you know, like it, it narrows it out. General Mills monsters. What a magical thing from people in our timeline. People still care about that. That still cuts through. That's still a thing, right? It is. Um, I was really jazzed when we got that license. It was one of those like, Oh my God, like we, we, we got it. And it's funny because it's sort of the, the, to go off on a slight tangent here, when you get it and we announced it and we weren't able to get Yummy Mummy and Fruit Brute at first, that mm -hmm. wasn't included. And we announced the, the characters, everyone's like, where's Fruit Brute? Where's Yummy Mummy? Almost like, like they need to show that they're into the stuff that not everybody's into. Right, right. And it's sort of like, we want those, but we can't get them. And then we were able to get them and whatever. So uh, it was just kind of a funny thing. But, um, you know, people are still into it. I, I, I do wish you know, we tried with them. And, and so there's, it's hard. General Mills is very, has way more regulations than any company we've ever worked with ever. Um, and I mean, everything has to be lead tested, flammability tested. I mean, we literally spent thousands of dollars uh, producing not only the masks, but the shirts before we even had anything 
available to sell. I mean, months. The, the first 10 months of the license was literally spending, 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 creating, creating, creating until we finally got things approved with all the different laws and, and all of these different limitations, which again, that's fair. I mean, that's what they need us to do. Um, and people don't see that end of it. I kind of wish, I don't, I don't know. I feel like, I don't know if we really hit the nail on the head for people. And I thought the masks were kind of like a definite win, you know, and they, they did okay, but they didn't do as good as I had expected. And I honestly, now that I think about it, I think people, it's like, they can't just get one. You know, right. it's like you need the set and that becomes more money and more shelf space and more of everything. And I, I totally get it, you know, which is why um, the monster cereal, the monster mash monster cereals mash tish is right. such a great idea because it gives the person the ability to be like, I was into this as a kid and it has all of them on it. Exactly. We've got a couple of ideas that we're going to do. And we couldn't bring out this year because it was too late because of the time line for approvals. So they'll be out next year. Um, we've got some other things that we we wanted really again time frame for testing and uh, I mean we have to get manufacturers audited and again the lead testing and all of this stuff it's it was like it was crazy I mean whatever again you have to go through it to to get the products out and we just went and did what we had to do but I think people still love it I don't know if I don't know if it's as much of a I think it's just people want to grab the cereal in September and October I don't know if they really want to collect everything about it or maybe we just haven't hit the right mark with it again they haven't done poorly but they yeah. haven't done as good as they thought they would it is an interesting thing because i definitely have nostalgia for it but where would i want to put that nostalgia and as the world shifts to healthy eating do i want people to come to my office and be like right. oh so you love marshmallows uh, you know but i mean dude turning their marshmallows the actual marshmallows that were in the cereal turning those into enamel pins would be fucking killer <laughs> Well, I, I can tell you that we, we are, so enamel pins were the things that we were going to put out this year. We have the rights to do them, but trying to get our manufacturers audited and approved by General Mills oh. and then doing their, that has been, that really has been the crux. In fact, right before you and I jumped on here, I had a call with General Mills. It was a quarterly forecast and all this stuff. And, uh, you know, they were like, Hey, you know, you're not, you know, we were, we didn't hit what we proposed that we're doing. I'm like, yeah, because part of what we proposed was pins and we couldn't get the pins out this year because our manufacturers weren't being audited in time or this whole, it was a whole string of events and we're still working on it. We just have to push it off till next year. Cause yeah. it's literally going to take us the next 10 months to get these things done and approved and out the door. So, and doesn't that make that you, time. doesn't that make you hate the bootleggers even more that they can just make it on Tuesday, yeah. put a pickup on Wednesday, place the order on Thursday and you're like, I'm going through all these hoops. Like friends of mine did universal monster pins. Mm -hmm. They look fucking amazing. And every time I go to the internet, I see somebody else that's just made them on their own. And I would be so aggravated if I was the people that did it the right way, did it the legit way, made really, really killer set, but it, they're just everywhere, you know? And it, 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 it's gotta be frustrating to be you and be like, yeah. That would be fun to make if there were no rules in this world. Yeah, it is. And, and you know, going back to the likenesses thing where people do shirts and they'll use the likenesses, but they don't have the, li the license. So they're just putting the people's faces on them and we can't, you know, or like the pins thing or whatever. It's like, then it looks like we're doing the copying. Yeah. Like, you know, it, it's like, no, no, we had this idea. And it just took us literally 10 months to yeah. do it because it's been stuck in red tape. It took know? us 18 months, not 18 days. And that's the problem right. that you see people like lap you because they don't have the same rules that, that you have. Uh, two last ones for you here as we wrap up our conversation. And thanks a lot, Ben, for coming on and being part of Creep Week. Um, it's, it's always honor when people like, yeah, I'll do something and allow you to put the word creep next to my name when you explain to people who I am. Dude, it's an honor to be on the show. Are you kidding me? I, I've always loved listening to you. It's it's honestly like to me being talking like this is like, I don't know. This is the way I like to do interviews. So this well, is the best. Thanks, bud. Two last ones that I wanted to end on. Even though I've ridiculed for people being like, you should do this. I got two ideas. One's a real idea. One's just me being me. But have you ever considered getting in the world of production and producing stories like have you ever thought of getting into step a because your company exists at step c and you've got the fan base you've got the followers 
Have you ever thought about actually telling original stories or partnering up with young people that you think that have a potential and evolving the company in more of a 360 manner instead of the, the we're sort of following behind things that already people love. Like, have you ever thought about going to the, the origin of creation? Yeah, actually I have, as a matter of fact. And, you know, I, when I grew up, like I, w- I wanted to be a comic book illustrator. So I went to college for yep. it. And then I changed it over to filmmaking and then I went to graphic design and then became a business owner. <laughs> so I think in my blood has always been the desire to create. And, and I'm very blessed and lucky to be able to create four things that I've loved growing up. So there you go, friends, a fun conversation with the guy that literally figured out a way to turn his fandom into a business and to just do what he loves and to be able to hire the people that he wanted to hire and to do it with. I loved in the episode where he talks about how he's just waiting for different uh, property licenses to open up because he's just so excited to create in those worlds. And then hearing from a guy that absolutely adores Halloween, getting to be in the moment of your life where you're figuring out how to produce and fabricate your own Halloween costumes. Like just how cool is that when life goes 360 and you're literally just sitting down in front of a project that you completed going, man, 15 year old me would be so stoked. If you want to hear the complete episode, go over to my website, aidpodcast.com. You can become a member of the circle of trust, which unlocks our daily content for his members only, as well as our archive of over 800 episodes. I'll see you tomorrow when we continue with Bricky's Guide to Breaking into Hollywood.